And I had always designed spaces, I think like many of us, just picking things that met the needs of our clients. You know, beautiful, luxurious, uh, within their budget, durable, had the look, the feel, the style, and that on the surface. And I never really gave thought to what is this leather really about? What goes on here? What is this fur about? What is this down about? And I, I always look back and I say, you know, clearly I'm not an idiot, right? But I guess I just wasn't ready to make the connection because once you make the connection and you admit to yourself that things here are conflicting because as we're, we're talking, as I mentioned, here's Luca, right? My dog, we love animals. You have to be ready. And I'm very involved with animal rights. My family is, we've always, we love animals. So I'm involved with PETA. I'm on the board of Farm Sanctuary. We donate a lot of our time to animal rights organizations. So it's something that's very dear to our heart. So why was I not making these connections? Again, timing, process, everything in life is you have to be ready for change. Because as I say, once you see the dark side, it's really hard to go back. So I was always getting these videos, probably from Peter or other organizations that were going to my inbox with the title, Dog Leather. Ignored it for years, but I guess that day, the stars aligned and I was ready to make the change. I clicked on the video, my whole life changed because it was about dog leather and dog leather exists as you see here in this um, picture. So a skin can be anything. It can be dog, cat, raccoon dog, seal, kangaroo, cows, poor cows, and um, it exists, it's real. And when I saw the video, it was horrific, it was tragic. And I said, I can no longer, after seeing this video, use anything that is derived from animals. And I really did like a 360, it was a knee jerk reaction, which was crazy when I look back on it, because I said from that day forward, I'm not using anything animal derived. So I had to completely, recreate my sources, completely recreate my entire design philosophy, really. And I started searching and looking and researching and I just hit upon the tip of the iceberg because it wasn't really just about animals, it was also about humans and workers and laborers and children. And then it trickled, of course, into the environment. And I had entered this rabbit hole because it was all connected and it is all connected humans, non-humans, and the environment. It's all one line and we all directly affect one another. So as I was doing all this research and started designing spaces that were non-animal based, a very interesting thing happened. I started getting emails from people, from designers, professionals, even non-professionals, inquiring about vegan options. How do you do it? What fabrics? Are they durable, affordable? Which ones? from designers, how do you approach clients, so on and so forth. So because of that, we created a whole nother business called vegandesign.org. And it was, became and is an educational and membership-based website. And we basically just teach people through courses, constant education and webinars and so on and so forth about vegan design. And we are in almost every continent. It's been amazing. And it's really been life-changing for me. This whole thing has just been life-changing in such a wonderful way. And it's given me purpose. And I think that that's what a lot of this is. You know, we want purpose. We want to wake up every morning with purpose. And I was feeling very um, dissatisfied at a certain point in my career with my regular design business. I wasn't feeling motivated. I was annoyed with my clients. I just wasn't in a good place. So I guess, as I say, things happen for a reason, which is what brought you here today and what brought me here to you. It all came together, which is great and awesome. And so in vegandesign.org, we have, it, it's been wonderful, it really has, and we just have the most amazing members and the most incredible course participants. Some of them are actually on this call. We're always we're just filling, we're constantly get, giving education to people. Right now we're creating a nursery course on vegan and non-toxic nurseries. Um, I'm always learning. There's not a day that goes by that I'm not learning because this is such a new field, but yet it's not a new field in a way. It's just never been brought out in the open. And now clearly is the time because the world is changing as I'm going to show you soon. Now, 
I'm going to give you guys just a little bit of sprinkling of information because it really is, it's very involved and there's a lot of information. But I always tell people, don't go 100% vegan in your company immediately. I never recommend that and that, that's not what I do. I'm not here like the preachers telling you to go vegan in your business because I did it, but I'm also a little cuckoo. But um, add it like a specialty, you know, like you have lead certification, staging, color consultation. This can be a, a vegan or cruelty-free certification specialty that you have, okay? So I have to keep looking at my notes, sorry. All right, so let's talk about vegan design a little bit. By the way, um, every year 15, hold on one second, da, 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 1 billion animals are killed yearly with the skins and hides trade every year, okay? That's just one number for you. So vegan design is basically no wool, fur, leather, silk, down, feathers, reptile skin, fish, bones, or any other animal derived material are used in vegan design. So anything that has a face or a soul, I say, right? Materials and fabrics used do not contain, harm, torture, or exploit any conscious living being. Vegan spaces are free from tragedy and toxins. And that to me is the most important thing. They're free from tragedy and blood. This is a completely vegan room, by the way, 100% vegan. So it's not only that very, a lot of people think that it's like, has to be a very boho rustic look. That's not true at all. There's everything, everything is available that is non animal based. You just have to know where to get it. Oops. Okay. So we're gonna go into some statistics, but first let's get an understanding of where the world is at. Wellness is the new luxury. I'm sure many of you are realizing this and know this because I'm sure you're all well read and up on this stuff. There's a growing demand from consumers worldwide to put an end to animal testing, animal derived products, and to create healthier alternatives to enhance our well being. So, one thing I want to mention is that a vegan product and a cruelty free product are two different things. A product can be vegan, but not be cruelty-free, because cruelty-free is a product that is tested on animals. And you can have an animal-based product that is cruelty-free. So it's very misleading, and I think that it's done on purpose, quite honestly, because you never get real answers. And that's been, also for me in researching, it's very hard, it takes so long to really find out the true meaning of a fabric or a, a material, because the companies make it very difficult because they almost don't want you to know what's going on. Jack Waugh, the founder of Alibaba stated, today's consumer wants to be healthy and happy, no matter who they are. People are spending on holistic approaches to health and wellness that include nearly every aspect of their life. So you have the young people now who defined what is luxury to the new generations. It's not the blinged out jewelry, it's not the fancy sports car, it's about travel, and it's about being in environments that are conducive to good health and feeling good, positive energy. And that can be luxury driven or it can be affordable. You have fashion houses now, Gucci, Tom Ford, Chanel, Versace and Coach that have banned fur. Furniture, the home furnishings industry, I believe is the next industry. We're already seeing it that is going to be, going to be open and more aware about compassionate design. I mean, remember 15 years ago when someone would mention an organic tomato, you were like, an organic tomato? That is the weirdest thing I've ever heard of, right? Now you can find them in drugstores. So it's interesting. The global synthetic leather market is expected to reach 40.9 billion by 2027. That's telling you something. That's giving you a pulse of where consumers are. This is also a completely vegan room, 100% vegan. So vegan design, wait, my face is blocking this, hold on. Interior design is next in line to support compassion. It's here and now and it's exciting. Basically just what I said. Just wanna look at a couple statistics because I love statistics, I think, and they're really important. This is on consumers globally. A couple, I mean, they're all great, but just two I wanna focus on. 88% of consumers will be prompted to boycott a brand for irresponsible business actions. So people are really looking at the source of what they're buying. They wanna know that it's good. They wanna know that it meets their needs. 
I also think 81% of, of consumers tell their friends and family about a company's corporate social responsibility efforts. To me, that's so incredible because with all the social media, with all the marketing, with all the ads that we do, still referral is king. And, and word of mouth and having a friend or family member telling you that a product is great is still worth everything in this world. So that's something to think about too. And this is just on Google Trends. Look at Google Trends with the word vegan and the word cruelty-free. Look at how they're trending and how in the past five years, these two terms have increased drastically. People are becoming aware. They're compassionate. They're socially responsible. They're looking for cruelty-free products. They're becoming vegan. Now let's look in the UK a little bit. The number of vegans in the UK grew by 62% in 2019. That is that's incredible. I mean, that statistic, we're always checking our stats when we pulled this one up, I, I just couldn't believe it. 12 million UK consumers, 23% of the population will be either vegetarian, vegan, or pescatarian by 2021, right around the corner. So it's showing you that they are spending on a compassionate, humane lifestyle. And the last one is, well, let me move my face again. My, my face keeps getting in the way here. Hold on. Um, I think what's interesting here is that a third of UK consumers claim to be very concerned about issues regarding the origin of products, and nearly 60% of them prefer buying products that are natural and known for health and wellness benefits, right in line with vegan design. Okay, so now that we understand our consumer, let's talk about fabrics a little bit. Again, I'm sorry, I gotta keep moving my face here. I don't know where to put my face. We'll put it down here. Okay. The top five most environmentally damaging materials in the world in order are leather, silk, cotton, vast fibers, and wool. Vast fibers are made from a plant, and that's what rope, yarn, sacks are made of. And it's interesting because whenever I would look at a sack or rope or yarn, I would think, oh, it's so natural. Well, it's really one of the most toxic things in the world. The textile industry is one of the most toxic industries worldwide. Over 8,000 chemicals are approved for use in fabrics. Chemicals are linked to cancer, autism, kidney failure, hormone disruptors, infertility, decreased sperm count, mental impairment, behavioral issues, fetal malformations. I could have gone on with about another 30 things, but we don't have enough time. It is horrific. Almost 30% of a fabric's weight can be from the chemicals within it, 30%. Um, John and I were talking before the call and I told him, let's say the average sofa um, takes about 25 yards of fabric, correct? 34 pounds of chemicals went in to treat those 25 yards of fabric. And that's what we're sitting in and sleeping in and cozying up to. These same chemicals are then washed out into rivers, lakes, streams, and oceans, destroying wildlife, people, and the planet. Do you know that um, when they uncovered the um, items in the Titanic, they were underwater for 75 years. The, all the leather upholstery was not rotted. Can you believe that? 75 years underwater wasn't rotted at all because of all the chromium and the other chemicals that were laden within the leather. That's a good thing to bring up at a dinner party if you ever go out to dinner again. Okay, leather. Leather is one of the most toxic pollutants in the world. It's even more toxic than automobiles. The average tannery worker in India dies at the age of 55 from exposure to toxic chemicals. These workers, these children, these adults work in the most disgusting conditions. Everything is, nothing is regulated. They are knee deep as you see this child is waist high and now those are pure toxins. Um, all of that water, the wastewater runs into the local rivers and streams where they bathe, where they bathe their babies, their children, their families. They eat the fish in those local rivers. Those fish are completely poisoned. It is just a vicious, horrible cycle. The animal materials industry is archaic. The process of turning a part of an animal into a useful material is long and inefficient. It's completely outdated. The production of leather can take up to two years and requires significant energy an endless amount of land. It is, it is something that just does, there is no need for it in today's day and age. Um, 
leather. Approximately 250 harmful chemicals are used in the tanning process of leather. They include chromium. There's, I mean, there's, there's 250, but these are the ones that I think most of us know. Chromium, cobalt, cyanide, lead, and mercury. This is what we are surrounding ourselves with and our clients with, because those things do not go away. Just like formaldehyde and sheets doesn't go away when you buy wrinkle-free sheets. The chemicals go into the ocean, killing the orca. They go in and all the marine life. They go into the environment, killing the monarch butterflies, songbirds, bees. Um, 150 species go extinct daily. 150 species go extinct daily. And that's because of what we have done to this world. And the textile industry is one of the biggest culprits because they are huge, they are gigantic. Global warming is, um, I, I, wanna, I want to have you guys listen. This is a one minute video I did on greenhouse gases because it really correlates with what we're speaking about. Scientists, but I would like to explain very simply, and I mean very, very simply, it, okay. what greenhouse gases are and how okay. they relate to nature. So here we go. Mm -hmm. Heat from the sun gets trapped in the Earth's atmosphere, which keeps the Earth at a temperature we people can live with. The atmosphere must be able to fluctuate in temperature, getting hotter when needed and cooling down when needed. Without being able to change temperature, we die. Now, all of the pollution and toxic gases that we keep adding to the atmosphere are clogging it up, making it thicker and too hot. So when the atmosphere needs to get cooler in order for us to survive at a temperature that is appropriate for us, we can't. The heat has nowhere to go. This is called global warming. We humans are the cause of global warming, and the horrible effects of this increase in temperature are shrinking glaciers, more storms and flooding, which cause more droughts, fires, disease and insects, more heat waves and more smog. The list is just endless. One of the strongest gases that is clogging up our atmosphere is methane, which comes from cow flatulence. This flatulence. This gas lasts 12 years in the atmosphere and is stronger than any other greenhouse gas. Leather production has a lot of negative impact on global warming. We are raising too many animals that naturally release gases that are killing the planet, all because we want their meat, skins, fur, feathers, and any other part that will make a buck. Interesting, no? So <clears throat> just so you know, in the past 25 years, listen to this, ADHD has increased 400%. Male birth defects have doubled. Dementia in men has increased 300%. Asthma has increased 60%. Autism has increased 1,500%. Premature births, 20%. Again, just a small of the very large list that I'm sharing with you. Let's talk about wool down and reptiles. There is no such thing as responsible wool, leather, down fur, or any product that's from a living being. And the term responsible is a marketing tactic only. Please, I beg of you, do not believe when you read responsible wool. It does not exist. By the way, everyone should go pet farm animals and spend a day with them because it really changes you and gives you more purpose with what you're doing if this is your mission. This was uh, at a farm sanctuary in California, and I never forgot it. This sheep was literally, this lamb was like a puppy. And it just, it just gives you more energy to, to make change. Um, let's talk about responsible wool for a minute. So Merino sheep are bred now to have so much fur that they literally can't stand up. They're so heavy. Their fur is so thick that maggots settle into the folds of their fur and they get infected and many of them die from the infection because clearly they're not cared for. Um, it's a condition called fly strike. So the genius of the fur of the wool industry said, hey, we've got an idea. They started doing um, a procedure called mule sing, if any of you have ever heard of it, where they literally, when they're babies, they cut away all their skin from their hind area, around their legs, their, their butt, butt, their stomach, the inner thighs, all that kind of area. So that way, when they, it, it scars and they only have skin, there's no more fur, so they don't have to worry about fly strike. Of course, they do this without any anesthesia. Many of them use blunt knives to do it. And many of the animals die. Um, so these are the same farms that now tout they are responsible and they do not need to do meal sling anymore, which is not true. The, the sheep industry, like all the other industries, is horrific. So please don't believe that. If anything you've get not gotten out of this course, don't, don't believe that. 
Um, working conditions in fern alligator farms are just as dangerous and filled with just as much disease. Basically, it is impossible to treat an animal humanely when that animal is considered an object for profit only and not as a living, breathing, intelligent being that can feel pain, fright, hunger, and seek to protect its young. This is very interesting. This is an animal handler sheet that we got a hold of a couple of years ago. This is what animal handlers who work in these places have to sign off on. So basically they're signing off their life. They're signing off to perhaps getting cancer, asthma, leukemia, drug addiction, um, depression, septic infections, carcinogens, being attacked and bitten by animals, exposure to formaldehyde, the list just goes on and on and on. I just, I just mentioned a couple of the things that they, have to, that they have to agree to because they, like the animals, are desperate. It takes about 12 ducks live plucked for one standard pillow. Live plucking is literally when the duck is fully conscious, fully alive, and they pull the, the feathers out of the duck. It can be related to someone pulling the hair out of your head. That is, they get life plucked at least three times a year if they survive. Many of them die just really from shock. Um, eight cows or calves for one average sofa. Five sheep horrifically sheared three times a year for an area rub. Um, 80 mink skins for the average throw. 100 rabbits for the average throw. I mean, again, I have a long list of this, but this is just to give you a little bit of an idea. Um, I just wanted to mention something. A lot of the numbers that we got and how many quantities it takes for things. Um, I published a book a couple years ago, uh, a beautiful coffee table book on vegan interiors, but I felt it was also important to include statistics and facts and quantities for the reader. So during our research, we had to call a lot of these farms and pretend that we were interested in buying skins. And it was, I still remember making those calls along with my team and it was really difficult. Um, but what was so sad is that certain skins, the scarred skin will be a much better deal than a skin without any scars because the scarred skins are ones from beatings and cuttings and being sliced up and it was really horrific. So there are numbers attached to each one of the items that you do purchase for a client. Now let's talk about what to buy. Now that we know all the horrible things that happen with animal-based materials, so what can you buy? Again, there's a lot to it, but I'm just gonna give you the, the simplified version. For us, the Cadillac of fabrics and materials and products are things that are GOTS certified. That's called, that stands for Global Organic Textile Standard. GOTS certified products do not use any harmful pesticides, toxic metals, and chlorine bleach. They have very, very strict standards in order to get that certification. Within GOTS, there are also many other certifications. They have GALS, which stands for Global Organic Latex Certification. That's for things like pillows and mattresses. It's a wonderful organization. So we always look for fabrics and materials and products that are GOTS certified. Then we look for things that are also fair trade certified. Fair trade is about better prices, decent working conditions, local sustainability, and fair terms of trade for farmers and workers in the developing world. Now the workers' conditions are cleaner, less toxic for laborers and surrounding marine and wildlife and villages. And as I was saying before, we're all connected. So if workers are working in safer conditions, that means that things are not as toxic and it's cleaner. So there's less runoff of toxins and dangerous things that go into the waters and affect the wildlife and the environment and so on and so forth, okay? Because uh, just a little bit of, of health here, we're gonna go into that in a second, but our skin is like a sponge. I mean, it's porous. Our skin absorbs everything around it. So if we are sitting in a chair that is filled with chemicals, our skin will absorb that. The fragile population especially, meaning infants, the elderly, people with, with challenges. Infants, for example, they sleep 18 hours a day approximately. When your body is warm, you are more prone to absorbing all the chemicals that are around you because you're warm and you're in a very relaxed state. Your body, and that's when your body is repairing itself. So while your body is repairing itself, you're absorbing yourself with even more chemicals that are going into your bloodstream within seconds. So vegan GOTS certified fabrics are a great way to go. You always want to look for that because even like people don't realize printed fabrics, they can say organic, but if they're printed and they're not GOTS certified, 
the dye is so toxic and you're, you're putting a child or an adult in that environment. You know, we can relate it to something like you buy an organic apple. Great. Now, was that organic apple treated with red dye after that? Well, is it still organic? You know, so good marketing. You have to really be knowledgeable. You must be educated. Okay, a little bit more on health. Um, vegan and got certified materials like paint and furniture are safer for all people. I just said that. Look at that. I was ahead of myself. Like for fragile populations such as infants, young children, and the elderly. I mean, imagine being pregnant and surrounding yourself in a down comforter. Feathers, pesticides, bed bugs. You can, you can get something called a uh, feather duvet lung. You can look it up. It's an actual illness where you get scar tissue on your lungs from the, um, the down feathers that are within um, uh, products that contain down like pillows and comforters. Attract insects or hold moisture. Look at me, I'm so ahead of myself without even looking at these notes, okay. Okay, some great vegan alternatives. Again, GOTS, and believe me, I have no stock in the company that I think it's a nonprofit organization, but we're just so impressed with GOTS, we really are. Um, tensile, bamboo, modal, cotton, linen, cork, hemp, sisal, rubber, canvas, those are fantastic fantastic alternatives for you and your clients or for yourself. Non-vegan materials, which I think many of us know, but I never like to assume. I've learned that in life. Wool, sheepskin, goatskin, leather, suede, fur, feathers, silk, horns and tusks, which yes, they are still using. Beeswax, lanolin, latex, only get rubber lake text from the kapok tree. Glue, cow hides. Real versus faux, this is, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a yin and a yang. I'll look, a vintage leather is very, very expensive. You can get a faux leather, which is much more affordable. It is toxic, but I guess, it, you know, we're, we're, we always do our best, right? We just want to do our best. Um, so that will be less expensive, as buttery, as beautiful. I have beautiful faux leather um, options for clients when they really, really don't want to go completely non-toxic. Um, you go non-toxic, it can be less money, however, it's not going to last as long. But I always say, it, you know, it's what you want as a person, you know, manifestation, right? I mean, if you want a clean, positive space, you want to make sure you surround yourself with clean, positive things, correct? Um, so a GOTS certified fabric, like an organic cotton, will not be treated. It's not going to last as long, but yet you're going to stay healthier. You know, that's how I look at it. And your medical bills, I guess, for getting asthma or rash or, or, or any of the sicknesses that you can get from toxins are going to be a lot more than buying a new set of sheets. So that's how I kind of look at it. So I think it's kind of a 50-50. A Sensory and vegan design. So um, the fragile population, you know, as we were talking about, plus those with um, neurological and developmental challenges is, um, I mean, vegan design is just, it's, it's just a perfect match. Um, Non-animal based decor is really a perfect match for everyone, but those with challenges, uh, with, with developmental challenges and sensory issues clearly are much better off using things that have no smell, no odor, or very gentle and no chemicals because this population is very sensitive to those things. They're hypersensitive to them. So as I like to say, you know, a tag on, on our skin, you know, from a shirt can be annoying. For someone with autism, that can actually be painful. Um, the sound of a fan can be annoying for us, for them. Again, they can hold their hands to their ears. It can be so painful. So using non-animal based decor is just ideal for them. And, you know, years ago, it's interesting, when I started designing for children with autism, which I do, and it's, it's something that I really enjoy very much, um, I never really used things that were animal-based. And I didn't even know why at that time. I wasn't doing it for, for compassionate reasons. I was doing it because I knew that the smell of leather could be very bothersome to them. Or the smell of a nylon rug could also, that smell and that texture could bother them a lot. So I was really doing vegan design then without even realizing it. So. This is one case study of a family in the Northeast, um, they were in the New York area, and this was their summer estate that we designed. And they had five children, a couple dogs, and one of their daughters uh, was in the spectrum of autism. So we designed her space, and if you look at it, it's just like a very cute 
girly bedroom. But you know, there were things that we really had to keep in mind. We needed a hanging chair for a vestibular sensation of rocking back and forth, which is very calming. Again, whatever someone with, with spectrum issues feels, we, we all need and we all crave. They just need it more for their, for their balancing and anchoring. Um, so we had hanging chairs, we had soft rugs, we had soft lighting, we had low seating, the colors were very soft. Everything in this space is vegan. And I believe most of the things were GOT certified. If they were not, there's another standard called Okatex certification. Okatex is if you can't do GOTS, you're going to do Okatex. Okatex does use chemicals, uh, but still they have much more stringent standards than just buying a regular fabric. So there were probably some Okatex materials in here too. Um, and of course, I uh, using um, you know, non, uh, vegan design within uh, is always going to be sustainable because you know, we're trying to use things that are not taking up land, not using animals, not using chemicals. So this actually is a coffee table that weighs about 2,000 pounds. It's an eight by 10 foot coffee table. And those two pieces of wood were taken from a tree that had fallen in California. So it's got a great story. And that's what I like also. A lot of the things when you design this way really have an interesting story. And you know, design really is all about a story you now. And so I think it's um, really cool to bring in things that, that have a lovely story to them. Um, we talked about this, uh, you know, just now how companies are really becoming very creative because they're seeing how to meet the needs of this consumer, which is very exciting for us. So something like cork, for example, which years ago was used just for dark boards and, um, you know, just for specific things, cork boards, right? Now it's being used for flooring. It's being used, they've actually now making a material made of cork, wallpapers. So everyone's becoming more creative with sustainable products. And cork is a very sustainable product. Um, I always get asked, how do you approach clients? And again, John and I were talking about this. I don't know if any of you have seen the movie um, Big Fat Greek Wedding, if you have or have not. Um, but there's a scene in that movie, and it's about the dad. He's like this, this very tough Greek dad, and the daughter wants to go to college, and he doesn't want her to go to college. But they, they manipulate him in a way that he actually thinks he made the decision for her and said, I have a great idea. You should go to college. And they're all like, Great idea, dad, great idea. Meanwhile, it was their idea the whole time. That's how I treat clients who I'm not sure whether or not they would be um, open to non-animal based uh, decor. I make them think that it's their decision. Give them the power. Everyone wants to be heard. It's all psychology. Now, firstly, some, some clients don't even know that I'm vegan in my approach because if they're referral based, sometimes they don't even check my website. So. I never offer them anything animal based. Hey, you know, they didn't ask, I don't offer it, right? So that's great. But then if I have the ones who are like, you know, I really want a leather couch. Well, then I always just do the side by side test and let them see for themselves. You compare it, you scratch it, you put juice on it, you do the test and let them see for themselves that the alternative is so much better. It might be even a little less expensive, it's durable, and you, all the facts are right there and let them make the decision. There's a lot of ways to approach it, but those, those are two really quick ones. Oh, and also it's a great story. You know, a lot of clients love to be able to, to tell their friends, do you know that there's nothing in here that was made with animals on it? They kind of get into that. Um, okay, uh, of course, there is no blood or tragedy within any of the spaces, which is just incredible. And to me, that's about great energy. You're saving animals, people, the planet, and there's no blood or tragedy attached to your spaces. You're bringing everyone into these awesome, awesome, good, good, good places. Um, do we have time, John? John, how long have I been yapping? Oh, sorry, it took me a moment to remember I was Andrew then. Um, you've been yapping for about half an hour, 35 minutes. We, we've got time if you're happy to be talking still. It's like another five minutes. I just yeah, wanted I perfect. information on biofabrication, which is really the future. And there's so many exciting things going on. The world is having a race now. They're in a race to, to come up with creative ways to, to make fabrics and textiles and products and furniture that is not 
sapping the the planet from all of its things, all of its plants and forestry and animals and everything living. So biofabrication is really exciting. So you have materials now being made out of mushrooms and pineapples. And I have a couple videos that I want you to watch. They're very short. This is on mushroom leather. Oh no, oh no. Let's see, come on internet. You could do it. <laughs> All right. If it doesn't start, I'll just tell you really quickly. Ah, it doesn't want to start. Okay, so mushroom leather, fungi leathers are incredible. They're doing a lot of work in Italy with that. Um, the Italians are just great at this stuff. And they're making hides of mushroom leather. They literally look like hides of a cow. So that's on the horizon, which is very exciting. We have been trying to get a sample for a year and a half, and we just can't. So I guess they're just not ready yet to give samples, but it really is, it's amazing. Okay. Fashion designer Carmen Iosa transforms unused leaves this is pineapple leather. It's from pineapple farms into a vegan leather. And that means farmers in places like the Philippines can use all of a pineapple. Here's a breakdown of the process. First, the fiber is extracted in the Philippines and a fabric is created. Next, it's shipped to Spain to undergo chemical processing. Then companies can purchase the material for their products. Some brands have already jumped on the idea, implemented it into their accessories. Products currently using traditional leather from furniture to accessories could be covered with pineapple in the future. Burn easy. I'm Melissa Kress. Very cool. Now, pineapple leather, it's interesting. We got a sample of it. Um, they're using pineapple leather a lot in um, fashion, pocketbooks, shoes, things like that. And I was like, wow, wouldn't that be cool to try it for furniture? We got the sample. It literally is like a Brillo pad. So I don't think it's perfected yet. I would definitely not use it on upholstered goods or even a headboard. Maybe you can use it for, you know, wrapping a table or maybe like a valance, something that you're not really going to touch a lot. Um, and the colors were also a little intense. I mean, it's, 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 it's cool, but it's not there yet, I personally believe. Uh, this is Zoe Modern Meta, which is very cool. I don't think it's going to start either. This one is, um, they're basically making leather in labs real leather from and from they got the cells of a cow and they basically did almost like they say in vitro fertilization with these cells and they're growing sheets of leather and for designers it's going to be amazing because you could say i want a super thin red leather with pink stripes in it and purple polka dots and they'll be able to do that so it's coutured leather made in a lab um their their major lab is actually in new jersey and folks that's it Wonderful. Deborah, thank you so much. Should I stop sharing my screen? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, I don't know if anyone who's online has any questions. If you do, you can unmute yourself and ask Deborah. No questions? Okay. I don't think... I have, I have a question. Oh, yes. here we go. Hi, sorry. <laughs> Just trying to unmute. Hi, I'm <laughs> Kirsten, uh, Kirsten Davis and um, I'm a designer in Scotland. And um, nice to meet you. I really enjoyed your talk. My question is, so I'm a, I'm a commercial designer um, and most of our clients are in hospitality. Um, and I often find it's quite difficult to get them on board. And also in terms of commercial design, we're always obliged to follow regulations and code um, with regards to fire code, et cetera, which requires a lot of treatment. So I find it's quite difficult, even if we want to um, have more sustainable design and specifications for our fabrics, it's really difficult to do that. Have you found that as well, or have you found a certification or products that are very challenging treatable for things in the commercial environment? I think what you can do is you can look for something perhaps that's Okatex certified because Okatex mm -hmm have more chemicals. Gods, you have very, very, I mean, they're, they're non-toxic gods. So mm -hmm. you can't do soft, cushy, organic cotton that's going to meet any of the standards for commercial spaces or hospitality. But you can go Okatex certified. And yeah. at least you can go non-animal based Okatex certified. So it has, it has less chemicals. It should be able to meet the standards. Of, it depends on the fabrics, clearly. Yeah. That's what I would, that's what I would search. And you can email me and we can help you maybe direct you a little bit more. 
Um, mm. Kirstin, I do quite a lot of commercial work and um, yeah, Okatex is, is the route that I use and if you needed a supplier here in the UK then I can drop you some details if that helps you. But yeah, you, it's hard to find anything natural because of course you need the fire rating here so yeah, that's kind of where we get a bit stuck. Mm -hmm. What kind of products do you use that are Okatex certified for hospitality? So for there's a supplier do you mind me talking about suppliers on this, John? There's no, a, a not, at all, not at all. A, a fabric supplier called Sunbury Fabrics, who I've been using for mm. at least 15 years, and they are UK based. And they, so I buy things like um, a sort of suede effect um, fabric from them, which is fully fire rated. It's lovely and soft, and it's and it's not you know any animal products. So those are I really that for people. Beg your pardon? Spell that. Sunbury, S-U-N-B-U-R-Y, Sunbury Fabrics. Um, and they, they have the Okatex. So that's my way around it. Wonderful. Thanks, Chloe. They've got some fabrics. Oh, sorry, so they've got some velvets as well, which mm -hmm. I always find velvet is a nice thing to swap in instead of leather as well, because it's mm -hmm. so plush and beautiful. I think it's so, a little more durable too. Yeah. I mean the the um the rub test for the the um suede effect is something like two hundred and fifty thousand, so it's super super durable and it's kind of um impervious. It's great. It's it's a really good product. My clients love it. Also, residential clients love it. So, great. Okay, great. Thank you. Thanks for that. And could I ask a quick question? And this may be something that I'm I'm very very new to the industry. Um, I sat on the board for ABTA in travel for the animal welfare there and a lot of the boards did, um, when you got a certification you had either a partnership or a certified. Is it the same with the certifications here where you, you sort of have an aspiring to get to a certain point where you can still say you're a partner and then become certified once you've got there or is it you can only get sort of that got certified um, if you absolutely have every aspect of that straight away? I am not, I think you'd have to get in touch with uh, GOTS themselves. Because, okay. yeah, I, I don't even, I know it's a very strict certification. Very strict. Okay. Are most yeah. of them particularly strict? GOTS is very strict, I know. I don't know if anyone knows the answer to that, but I would. I would just say get in touch with them directly. I don't know if anyone has more information about GOTS than I do. No, I just, I just use GOTS. I, I just don't use any other cotton unless it's GOTS. So I don't, I, I, I think it's pretty stringent. So okay. same thing with printed fabrics, you know, be really careful. Only use GOTS printed fabrics because it's the same thing. You know, the fabric can be, organic cotton but then they put a print on it so the fabric's organic but the printing is not you know the printing is it's like the apple you know yeah thank you thank you for question anyone just, else have any other questions i just want to point out in case oh sorry no that's all right go ahead chloe uh, just really quickly because i'm a member of the biid the british institute of interior design and there is a introduction course which is not dissimilar to what Deb has just done for us but just to let you know if you are in a professional body you'll be able to use CPD points from this online course to put down on your CPD requirements so there's an added benefit. Great great point. That's good to know because I always do mine last minute <laughs> <laughs> and struggle to find anything. Um, um, my question I guess um, I've been vegan my whole life and so I've always been looking for leather alternatives but I know the ones in the past have been really really terrible for the environment and um, for me I'm vegan for animal cruelty reasons so I don't care so much because I know I'm using an alternative and not harming an animal but um, when I, I do commercial interiors when I talk to clients or co-workers about it they're always saying you know if you use an alternative isn't it terrible for the environment and so in your research and I, I haven't done that much myself um, but in your research, uh, are leather alternatives actually worse for the environment? 
No, I still believe that, and there's been a lot of studies on that. Leather alternatives still are, they're, they're, they're not good for the environment, that's just for sure, because yeah. of the toxins, but you're not having the entire process, that two-year process of, of the animal of that, that takes the energy and the land and the feed and the chemicals and the destruction that the animal uses up for two years in order for it to become a skin. So yes, it's definitely less destructive. I am. I was. I did a little bit of research, and I found out that the worst um, non-animal leather. So the the kind of you know, if you're looking at a PVC type leather, is mm. is only a third as harmful to the environment as leather itself. So I've read this in more than one place as well. So animal leather is three times worse than the worst of the plastic horrible leather. So it's that's very really interesting. Wow. wow doesn't make it right but it's it's not as bad it's nowhere near as bad so sometimes we have to do things by degrees i guess right yes. yeah i think so look just by being on this call to me you're doing more than most but you're getting ahead of the game because as you see by the the figures and the statistics especially now with what's going on in the world i mean mm. this is the future absolutely there's um, companies, there's Ultra Leather are doing a part bio leather, which is the first kind of big development um, into non-plastic. So watch that space because they are trying to get to a totally bio leather. Um, so they're a UK supplier as well. Right, you have all these, the biofabrication movement is incredible. You know, like the modern leathers, like all, like the mushroom leathers. I mean, there's so many grape leathers, apple leathers. You know, there's so many things on the horizon. Cactus leather now in Mexico. 